Uh, welcome back. Shola Rogers joins us now and uh, is going to be with us uh, to the end of the show. Uh, Shola, let me welcome you to, uh, to the show today. A lot of interesting things to talk about. Yes, uh, and, uh, thanks for having me on the show, guys. And yeah. I've been watching the US Open review that you guys have done. And the, the, the part that gets to me is David Ferrer, yeah. you know, 27 titles, none a Grand, Grand Slam. Slam. is calling it a day on his career. It's a sad one. He was going to go down as one of the few people who got to the peak of the game but never won a Grand Slam. Yeah, because he was unlucky to be at in the, the era. midst of Rafael Nadal, Roger Federer and the same. Just look yeah. at it. Federer is thick. And, and Joko Noli. Federer is yeah. 36. <laughs> Joko, I don't know what that guy is going to perform. What they're already calling him. Uh, what are they calling him now? I mean, one living legend right now because 13 Grand Slams, yeah. age on his side. It's going to surpass Richard Federer. Okay, let's talk about <laughs> Shane Akumi's uh, charity foundation right now. You know, what happened in Lagos yesterday. Something good and beautiful. It's not just all about his own uh, charity foundation, but also about the China's International Kids Cup. Just knowing that the finalists will be part of this one. Yeah, I mean, this is huge, right? <laughs> it's, it's very huge. And uh, I'll, I'll, I'll uh, also get into it. I mean, talking about grassroots uh, football development, talking about education and sports, achieving that balance. It's always been a challenge. You have sports, sportsmen and women in Nigeria being told you're going to choose one. You know, people go to university and say, look, if you want to pass in this university, sit down for your exams, forget about athletics, forget about football. But we're seeing people come up with this kind of ideas, innovation to ensure that there's that balance. And that's why we're even talking about him today. And the fact that Ch China Skis Cup, the semi-finalist in four of them, are also going to be part of it. You know, it's heartwarming for us here and I guess for you as well. It is actually because um, every time we focus on elite sports, everybody wants to talk about the top teams in the land or outside Nigeria. But we forget where the talent comes from, which is the grassroots. Mm -hmm. And it also has to do with age-grade football. And um, there's something that Lagos State FA has been doing in the past five, six years, which is to create a database of players. Mm -hmm. They actually have the real ages of their players, which has always been a problem for Nigerian mm -hmm. sports. They have that. So they follow these guys through from primary to secondary school. Challenge Kids Cup has become, you know, that conveyor belt, taking them from different parts of Nigeria, from the nooks and crannies. So it's like a, man a marriage that, it, that was made in heaven. Because now, uh, Sheya Kiwomi is taking it to the next level. He's been doing this for years, in case people do not know. He's gotten a lot of players who have come from maybe very, very humble backgrounds. And they, they, because of their talent, they take them to schools. They take them to schools that normally their parents probably won't be able to afford, you know. We can't give those schools free advert on the air without mentioning one or two. Mm -hmm. But the beauty of it is that some of these kids... I've made it to the national under 13 team, mm -hmm. the under 15 team. Some of them, from the way things are going, will definitely make it to the under 17 and the Super Eagles on the long run. There are a couple of players who have come through the ranks, through the system, and I'm really happy that um, Shea is taking it you know, to the next level with this uh, tournament. All right, so uh, let's uh, listen to uh, Shea Akiomi. Uh, what he has to say, a very sure, a very happy man, uh, you know, when you do things and you're seeing the rewards, you're seeing the dividends, uh, you'll be encouraged to do more. So let's listen to Shea Akiomi and we'll come back for more on Sports This Morning. But we started brainstorming and thinking about how we could do it. And we thought, you know, Charles Kids Cup is a baby we all love. And they've done it very well. And we really must give kudos to channels. How do you choose the kids? So the easiest way was, why, why do we change the winning formula? Let's go back to Challenge Kids Cup. Those kids were screened, they were chosen, we've seen them, they're well behaved, and you know, there was uh, lots of skill there, real talent. So why do we just bring them back? Uh, we're adding the um, kids from Bono, the IDB camp, um, and they are coming as special guests because they'll be getting the award each year we've said we're going to give the school an award, an award uh, of Football and Education Charity Award. And they were the first recipients of that award. So now there's a reason for the tournament, where it's not just about the football, it's about compassion. So they will come and play an exhibition match against the, the football future stars. Now, what did they get? Each of those four teams will choose the best players. We'll have some coaches, but we'll also have uh, all of you guys look and choose the best player 
for each team. And the best player for each team then gets a cash uh, uh, scholarship. What we have done is that we've given the best players an opportunity of education, but we also highlighted them so that we can bring, invite them when we are doing our under 13, under 15 programs and they have a chance because they're the best players to go high in football as well. So where they might not have been seen before, we've highlighted those ones. Um, so all in all, they have a chance in football, they have a chance in education. All right, I like the baseline, chance in football, a chance in, in education. Shall I, need we say more? Uh, it's a total package, really. I think the man has said it all. The, 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 the most uh, uh, important part oh, of this yeah. whole thing for me is actually the IDP team, yeah. you know, because these are internally displaced Nigerians who have lost um, a whole lot mm -hmm. of things. But now we can also use sports and education to make them feel a part of the system again. And who can tell? Maybe there is one talent somewhere in one no, IDP yeah. camp that becomes the next Ahmed Musa or, or John Igalo. You know, so it, it's, it's a win-win for everybody. And we need to ask for more, not just from what he is doing as FA chairman or NFF yeah, vice, uh, vice president. president, but we need to ask for more from other states, from other from corporate bodies, everybody. Let's do more of these things for our kids because there's so many people out there that we need to get off the streets and sports and education will do it. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Sports and education will do it. I think uh, just before we leave this one, you know, when uh, people keep talking about MRI scan tests and all that that they do on the 17 players that have been screened, and I'm mm -hmm. like, you already have the bedrock. What's the point of still getting players that are over the age? You see, um, I'm, I'm going to go back a bit just to quickly address this. The Nigerian team at the last World Cup was arguably the youngest team at the World Cup. A lot of people wanted to argue, but it's actually true. Because if you check out, most of our players were actually born abroad. So their real ages are there, Brian, Let's talk about the ones that were born. No, no, that's where I'm going. You know, so we've been able to address that age thing from that angle. But from this particular angle, this is where the real problem lies. When you keep a database of players, you, you, you see what they've done. The Shea Kiyomi Foundation have actually tapped into the screening process that Channel TV has done. So there is a database you get. You know, so you cannot be 13 this year and be 13 next year and 13 the next year. Or you cannot have three passports or any of those things. It's not going to happen. You get because there is a database. There are pictures that have been taken, a whole lot of videos out there. So this is what it's about. When we latch on to this, when other states in Nigeria also key into this, the age grade thing becomes a thing of the past. Now, the MRI scan is not a big deal for me, but I'm happy that at least it seems like a foolproof, a self, uh, for safe plan. But I'm not sure it's that great because... We've seen cases where it's caught uh, twins, one passed and the other failed. It's not 100%. Yeah, it's not 100 percent. But if we refuse to cheat from the get-go, from under 13, we'll get it right. 